What's up, what's up, what's up, Facebook fam? It's your girl, Gail Crowder, and guess what? It is Tuesday, and you know what goes down here on Tuesday. Wife chat goes down here on Tuesday, and I am so excited because today I have a partner. I have a partner to talk about all things sexy, and guess what? We're going to be talking about a serious topic, a topic that you guys um, talk about and contact me, email me. I have coached you through. We have done wife chats. We have done master classes about it. Infidelity. One of the biggest things that can um, infiltrate our marriages, it can literally rock our worlds. And today I have an amazing, amazing pastor that I admire uh, from afar. Um, I'm, I'm one of his online uh, goers, you know, when I don't go to my, my local church, I have Pastor uh, Keith Battle here, and we're going to be talking about the side chick. Yeah, the side chick. She is real. She has affected some of our marriages. She has um, literally turned some marriages into divorce, and he is on the battlefield. As you guys know, I have been doing this for 12 years. I have been pouring into you guys, trying to keep you sexy, trying to make sure that you're healthy, strong, in and out of your marriages. And so today I am super excited to have him. We're going to talk about the side chick and he has wrote, written an amazing book. Let me just tell you, I started reading his book last night at 9 p.m. I was up again this morning at four doing my prayer time because you guys know I go in every single morning at 4 a.m. for women all over the world, for wives all over the world. And I literally finished his book around 11 because it's an amazing, amazing book. I know if you're on my email um, list and I know if you follow me here on social media, you guys have been getting the links and stuff. So support him, support him because it's an amazing book. And you, you guys know I don't just endorse anybody. So you guys support him, show him some love and I just welcome Pastor Keith Battle of Zion Church into Wife Chat, my very first guest. So I thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining. Make sure you're hitting the share button. Let everybody know that Wife Chat is going down here. So Pastor Battle, thank you so much for writing the book. Thank you thank so you. much for being open and honest in this book, because I know that was not easy to do, especially with the title that people give you, right? That 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 people have given you and that God has charged you to uh, be over thousands of people, even people like me that you didn't even know was part yeah. of your online community. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, again, thank you. And so tell me mm -hmm. what really made you come out and write this book. Well, first of all, thank you for having me as your guest. I feel honored that I'm on wife chat. Like. <laughs> I feel special. I, I work my way into the white chat. Um, <laughs> so there's so many factors that that went into it. I don't write about anything that I haven't experienced. So mm -hmm. um, I think your best work will come from your own life and your own experience. And so um, for me to to first of all open openly admit that I had been unfaithful to my wife was was not as hard for me as I think maybe I thought it was or for people to think, think it was because as I've said to people, I was, I was communicating it from a position of strength, not mm -hmm. from, you know, it was just exposed. My wife and I were dealing with the devastation of it being exposed. Um, you know, I was talking from the other side of a repaired marriage, a restored marriage, a renewed commitment to each other. Um, a greater self-awareness, a greater commitment to God, all the things that came out of it. And that, you know, if there's, if God can take a mess and bless it, I mean, he did for me. So I wanted to give people a map to help them discover like maybe why infidelity happens and then how they could avoid it when they see mm -hmm. the signs that it's coming. And so mm -hmm. that's why I love the work you do. And then, if you, if you have to drink that cup, like how do we recover from it? How do we bounce back? And so I knew that it was, I knew that it was, there was writing on infidelity in the, in the, in the authorship space, in the, in the literature space, but I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was written with one, number one, transparency, two, enough humor that it can get you through the book, um, but also the seriousness of the consequences and maybe some hope on the other end. Like 
we just write about cheating and just say it's cheating you dogs it's dogs it's just dogs gonna be dogs and <laughs> yeah, but but to bring but to talk about it scripturally like to bring the word of god into it because there's there's side chicks in the bible there's infidelity in the bible and 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 then there's there's lessons in the bible how to build a i would say a side chick proof marriage and i don't just want to i like side chicks because there's side slicks out here too they're men and women who cheat so Oh, absolutely. And the statistics says, you know, um, uh, I just literally uh, just completed before um, you guys, you know, we, we came together. Mm -hmm. I've been working on an on demand program called Life After Infidelity, because, wow. as, as you know, I've been doing this this work for 12 years and I have mm -hmm. literally coached probably about 500 wives that mm. have dealt with infidelity and in like 47 couples. Cause most of the time you guys don't want to, especially on the guy side, y'all don't want anybody, uh, you know, coming together telling you that you have to, to do things different. I, I, yeah. I just have to say that it's mm -hmm. not very easy to deal with the men. So the women literally come to me and they're like, Gail, what did I do wrong? And a lot of times when you're dealing for, with infidelity, especially if if it's the, the, the man that stepped out on, you know, on on the wife, we internalize that and we feel that we're inadequate. We feel that maybe we're not as attractive. We feel mm -hmm. that um, we're not, you know, putting it down as well in the bedroom or all of those different things. And, mm -hmm. and as you know, and as I know, men and women cheat for different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you were very, very uh, clear about that in, in your book. And mm -hmm. um, for for me, I have dealt with it on both sides. You know, mm -hmm. my husband cheated and then I turned around and had an emotional affair, which is to me is one of the harder ones to break. Right. Yes, and, and, and granted, this was years ago. I'll be married 30 years, uh, 31 years in July. But it, it was yeah. in maturity. We got <laughs> married young and it happened earlier on in our marriage because we did not have a foundation. And mm -hmm. so when you're looking at infidelity, you know, statistics say that, you know, 57% of men will cheat and 54% of women will cheat. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's growing by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. And you and I are on the battlefield trying to help these people navigate it. And we both have been able to survive that. Yeah. Um, and so, so when you're looking at statistics, how do you, why do you think it's growing at su such a rapid rate? Well, the the culture that we're in, I think I think that the, you know, maybe 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, we didn't have the internet, so we didn't yeah. have access to. You can have a virtual relationship with somebody in another part of the world without having frequent flyer, flyer miles. You don't have to have a passport. You don't have to have a long distance policy. All you have to have is the internet, and you can develop a relationship with somebody you went to high school with who's in another part of the country now. And I yeah. think that really feeds it. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think, I think, um, I think technology is another way that I think just, just me. That I think technology feeds infidelity. If you notice now, we're not as friendly as we used to be as far as interacting with people because most of our time is spent with electronics. So we're either on our computers or we're on our phones or we're listening to like like uh, the navigation system or ways or somebody some some direction telling us where to go. It used to be if you didn't know where to go, you pull over a gas station and you would talk to a person and you say, "How do I get to this street?" And they said, "Look, to go down here." There was so much interaction with people, but now we sit at airports. We're so disconnected relationally, but we're but but what happens is we begin to objectify people. So we see another human being, another human being, and it's attractive, attractive and, the, and, and the connection becomes more, more sensual than it is um, humane or relational, like because we don't interact with people. And that's true. I, is that you, you follow what I'm saying? Oh, no, oh absolutely. Yeah. It, it is 100 percent true. And it's so much easier because you, you if, especially for women, I'm going to say for women, and then you can talk about them, the male side, because you guys are very visual. We're more emotional. Right. right and especially right. if our spouses 
or is not telling us we're beautiful. I love you complimenting us or whatever. Right. We yeah. will go on Facebook and see what Rollo. I'm just using Rollo. So if it's a Rollo on here, mm -hmm. but you see what Rollo from back in the day that used to, you know, holler at me. Right. What is right. he doing? Is he free? You'll send him a little message. Hey, how are you? And right. then he's like, hey, you still look good. So right. then that begins that, oh my God, like he still thinks I'm attractive like he did, mm -hmm. you know, when we was high school, college or whatever that, that thing is. And if you're mm -hmm. not getting it from your spouse, then you open up the door, right? For you to start saying, let me get on here again with Rallo to feed what I'm not getting here, right? And right. that's really what happened to me. That emotional thing was I wasn't getting from Gil, right? And mm -hmm. and 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 I'm I'm one people who know me, I know I'm an open book. I tell it all because right. I'm not perfect, right? And I can't do the work that I'm doing. And I thank you for being open and honest in your book because a lot of people, like I said, think that you because you're a pastor, right? That you mm -hmm. just just walk on water. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and I thank you for being honest yeah. because again, all my books. Everything I teach, I have to come from an authentic place because I never want anybody to go interview my husband and he tell you something totally different. The same yeah. way I am on here is the same way I am at home, right? And so for me, it was it was it was that I wasn't getting that, right? But again, it was like you know when once once I finally told him because I I was it was eating me alive that I I was doing it right, and he was like, "Gee, I, I never wanted you." to feel like I was taking you for granted. It's mm -hmm. just that I'm just, I'm tired. Like, you know, I commute an hour and a half every day on, on a train, right? Almost two hours. And then when I get home, like, you know, for most of the part, you've taken off your clothes from work and you, you whatever. And I just did not know, right? And so it's a lack of communication that breaks down as well that opens that door. What, what are your thoughts about that for the men? Because you guys are visual. And what opens that door for you guys to say, I'm going to step out of my marriage? So I'm glad you said that because we are visual as men. And again, when you look at how the numbers of infidelity are growing, here's, here's another example, right? So there was a time where let's say you had pictures that you took at a beach, right? Mm -hmm. And you were in a bathing suit. For anybody to see you in a bathing suit, 30 years ago, they would have to be over your house and actually in your living room and open up, what's that thing called? The, um, uh, uh, album, photo a photo album. album. Yep. Photo album. When now I can see it because I was just on your page. Yeah. So now what we don't understand is I have, I have, I have, I have, so I got, because a friend of mine sent me the picture. So now my first, my first meeting with you is with you standing on the beach with your back turned, showing your butt, right? Ah, Maybe yeah. you wouldn't do that. But, but what I'm saying is, what people don't understand is, then when I, so for a man, when I see you at church, don't think I don't still see that. Yeah. Like even, I'm, I'm remembering what was under whatever you got on, right? And I mm -hmm. think because and, and anytime a man gets another, another thing that feeds this for men is pornography. So yeah. pornography is sort of like the go to move. Right. When a man is mm -hmm. not getting sex from his wife or he's not or he's single or whatever. But what it does is it trains us to not to have sexual pleasure without connection. So wow. I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to be responsible. I don't have to be a good listener. I don't have to be anything. I don't have to be fiscally responsible. I don't even have to be mature. I don't even have to brush my teeth. I can just pull it up. All, I got as long as I got the internet, I can enjoy any woman, anytime, any place, doing anything for me. And they got stuff now. They got people where you can go and talk to them, and they say, "Hey, you doing, big fella? Who are you looking for?" And all that stuff, right? So yeah, I'm a hero in that Those space. Those chat box. Those chat box can do anything. And, and you know what? Let me just tell you this, Pastor Bowder, and I, I catch heat from this from the church people, but I literally took the time to went, go and speak to a stripper, mm -hmm. a prostitute, and a, you know, a, and somebody who does porn. And I did that because I was being inundated by my wives who, who come to me to seek, you know, wise counsel, right? 
-hmm. about why is my husband who's a deacon in the strip club? Why is my, I caught my husband. We got a, a $2,000 bill from pornography. We, we, you know, mm. my husband, you know, w went and, you know, did a prostitute or I got, you know, all of these things. And I wanted to know what was so fascinating about these women. First mm -hmm. of all, what they, they all had in common was we as women was not created to do those type, that type of work. So mm -hmm. all of them are in an altered state, right? Mm -hmm. not, you, I had, I didn't talk to not one stripper that was not drinking and was not on some kind of drugs or something, right? All mm -hmm. of them are in an altered state. The other thing mm -hmm. that they did teach me is that we as wives don't pay you guys enough attention. Mm -hmm. We pay attention to the things that you're doing wrong, but we don't pay enough attention to the things that you guys are doing right, right? right? Yeah. And, and and we don't take the time to really look you in your eyes. What the stripper told me is, Gail, I lock eyes with that man. And as long as he's paying me money, there's nobody else in the room. It could be 20 men getting lap dances, but I just mm -hmm. locked eyes on him and he thinks he's the king of the world. And mm -hmm. why don't you guys do that as his wife? They mm -hmm. they come here and they tell us all, you know, all the things that are going wrong in their marriage. And we just just agree with them. We 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 make them feel that they can they their job is the best thing ever, because mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not a CEO, we make the guy that's doing trash, you know, picking up trash, feel like trash. Yeah. And so there feel is like, a lot like a of king goals going mm -hmm. into this infidelity piece and making you guys step outside of the thing. And I just wanted to validate, is that true information that I gathered from them workers? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I call it in the book, attention, relational ADD, right? Yep. Yep. When, when you don't get paid attention, you look for it in other places. And, and one thing, one thing about us as guys, like, You'll see it. Y'all don't know the power y'all have. Well, I'll give you an example. If if guys, if 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 six of us guys are playing basketball in the gym, and we're just shooting basketball and we're going at it, competing with each other, if one of our girlfriends walks in, all it takes is one. Even the dudes that's not his girlfriend, we all start playing harder. It's like when a girl is in the room, like you all make us go at to go at another level. And don't dare cheer for us. Like that's the biggest thrill. Like knowing that your your woman is your biggest cheerleader. And I think that's how that's how women. That's 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 what gets a lot of guys. It's that woman that that strokes his ego. That really tells him he's a good man, or tells him you know you smell good. That smells good. That looks good on you. Same thing that if that's his love language. If he likes words of affirmation. And he never gets a, he never gets affirmed at home, or he hears more complaining than compliments. Then there's a natural drift. It ain't even about sex at that point. It's just a natural drift in towards where I feel affirmed. So what? So a woman might be listening and say, "Yeah, but 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 he don't. He's not responsible. He don't clean up behind himself. He won't. He won't do what he needs to do by his kids. Um, we got all these problems going on. I can't get him to fix the." I asked him to fix the toilet, Pastor. He wanted to fix the toilet. And so a woman is trying to, she's struggling. She's saying, how can I find a way to praise this man when I got 10 things right now that I am so upset with him about that I'm trying I'm trying not to just cuss him out. I try forget about trying to compliment him. And so what I say is, what I say is, well, let's change the culture. Because every household where there's infidelity, Gail, and I think you would agree with this, there's a culture in the household that creates an environment where infidelity can happen. And I think what we got to be what we got to be keen on is what's what's the culture of our household, the culture of our marriage. And whenever there's a culture where there's not emotional safety and people aren't free to make mistakes and people are judged harshly for their shortcomings and weaknesses or even their personality differences. What we've created is a culture where people will go outside of that house looking for relationships. It could be with a gang, it could be a kid in a gang, it could be uh, alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be sex, it could be gambling. But all of it is an attempt to escape the emotional danger in my living environment. That's why I don't like coming in so late when everybody goes to sleep. 
and I don't like nobody, and I keep my door locked or try to stay away. But what if it's your spouse and you can't avoid them? And I'm saying we have to change the culture in our households. And how you do that? You do that one word at a time. Yep. So I talk about that in the book too. They're called affirmations. So what we have to do is, is just try to find one word every day that we can say, I love that about you. So you know you got six things on the list. The grass hasn't been cut, the toilet's still stopped up, the, the, we got another, the lights are off and all that. Well, you know what you say? I just love how you stay, how you do your workouts. You're, you're, you really stay in good shape. I just love that about you. I appreciate how much you take care of yourself. Now, it doesn't mean the other things have disappeared. What happens is, because that was the culture of my marriage, we didn't say nice things to each other. We just wouldn't say anything to each other. But when you start talking nice to each other and speaking like to each other, what happens is it makes the person actually start behaving better. It's amazing. Like they start doing stuff you ain't talking about. And you keep saying, I just love the way you work out. Next thing you know, the toilet fix. <laughs> Uh, he, he's yeah. teaching us. He's teaching us. And let me just tell you, I had to learn the power of shut up because literally I had talked my marriage into the ground. Mm -hmm. Gil's like, you don't never let me get a word in. So I'm not going to say nothing because mm -hmm. that would just if, when he wouldn't say nothing, that would just keep me going because I'm like, don't you hear me talking to you? <laughs> and so literally I led him to someone who didn't talk. Right. Wow. Wow. I, did. I led him to someone who would just listen. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like, gee, if you would just if you would have just learned to listen, let me complete my sentence and not always have such a big mouth. Right. I had to right. swallow that. Right. Because he left me. He left me because I was just out of control. Mm -hmm. I was. So you out of control. But you just you just this. This is classic side chickology. Right. <laughs> side. Chick. So in a boxing match. Right. If you ever watch a boxing match really highly skilled boxers don't come right out in the first round and start trying to hit the person. What they do is, is they measure a person, they're creating distance and space, watching speed. What they call that is they're collecting data. And what they're doing is they're figuring out their opponent on how, where his weaknesses are, where his strengths are. And it's like chess, right? Mm -hmm. That's how great fighters fight. People just fight, just go in there, just start swinging. They don't have no strategy, just trying to kill each other. But a great fighter collects data. Side chicks collect data. Mm -hmm. So most men end up with a side chick and it's a real relationship. I ain't talking about a one night stand, not that I'm minimizing that. I'm talking about mm -hmm. somebody they really connecting with. They're going to be talking about their wife mm -hmm. because she wants that data. You understand what I'm saying? So so what is she don't cook? She's like that. What she don't cook? Uh -huh. you know, what, she don't clean up. Look at my plate. No, just, 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 she just be running her mouth, man. She always running her mouth. She's just like that. She, you know what? She like, mm. Mm -hmm. She filed like, you know what? Just stay quiet. And you know what she'll do? She ain't, that ain't even how she is. She ain't even like that. She run her mouth too. But you know what she <laughs> does with him? Because she knows he don't like women to run their mouth and over talk him. So you know what she'll say when he's talking and talking and talking? You know, I just love listening to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, she's done. He's going to buy a ring. Or she'll say, <laughs> she'll say, she'll say you, know, I, you know, if you want to hear my opinion, I'll share it with you, but I'm perfectly fine listening to you. Oh, he's done. He's done. Because when he come home, he can say two words to his wife. Well, you shouldn't have did it. That's what your problem is anyway. And and then the, the, the gap widens, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Because so so that's why that's why some of the smart women will look at like what you did, right? Why not study Proverbs five? We study for Proverbs five from one angle. Why not look? Let's look at what these adulteresses are doing. These women picking off men. The Bible says many men are dead in her house. Like what yep. is she? What is she doing? Like mm -hmm. let's learn from her. She got the yep. flow. She got the skills. Like we don't. Want, we just had. Oh, she a skank. She a thought. <laughs> no. Well, she well. has. She has something that was attracted to your husband, and the lady had something that was attracted to my husband. And whether, she, like you said, she was a big mouth or not, she learned to close it when she was with him. And I had to learn to close mine to get him back. Wow. And get some counseling and not think, say everything that was coming through my head out of my mouth, right? I had to learn mm -hmm. that, right? And that's the reason why I, like I said, I went and 
talk to all of these workers, right? These workers in the industry, because I wanted to know and be able to give the wives who God has put in my life really good information, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and we can learn from everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And so sure. uh, before uh, we, we get going, I have some questions for my ladies. The first question they wanted to ask is, past the battle, why is it so easy for us as wives to forgive men for being you know, committing adultery? But it's very hard for you guys to recover and, and, and forgive us. All right. So <laughs> this 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 is these are adults, right? Yes. All right. You know, I've never I don't know if I've ever answered this publicly. I answered this in counseling sessions, but I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it to y'all. I'm gonna give it to you. Okay, give it to us. You got so, 80 plus women watching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so you you know I'm already in trouble with the brothers. All the brothers brothers don't be speaking to me now, they be like, Yeah, what's up? <laughs> I had a dude say, So you gonna write a book, huh? This was serious too. This is my dude. You gonna write a book? Huh? <laughs> like this is like so. So I'm 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 already out there. I already told my fans, might as well ride the horse. Yeah, go 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 on out there because you you right. you knew you was gonna get it when you got on here with me. Right, so right, if you right. didn't, yeah. <laughs> so, so so the the female and male anatomy are different. Yes. Right. So a woman is her sexual organ is enclosed. Mm -hmm. A man's sexual organ is exposed. Correct. What we so 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 every man has an ego. But what mm -hmm. you have to understand about the male ego is as fragile as an eggshell. Okay. As, we don't try to act sens sensitive, but we are. We just act. We just we just show it in anger. So we start mm -hmm. snapping, right? Mm -hmm. So most men that have had a woman that they're with, even if it's not their wife, but especially if it's their wife. And there's been another man whose penis has been inside of her. Mm -hmm. He can't, he can't, he can't, he, he want to know what, how big it was. What did they do? What did he do to you? What he did? How was he? It's hard for him. You almost got to act like it was terrible. R <laughs> Rollo was thinking he was all oh, he didn't. You, I mean, but he's probably, he's, it's, it's like in our minds, just to know somebody else was in there. Like, it's, I know it sounds different. Go ahead. But let me just tell you, most people, and I, and I'm I'm going to say only ten percent, and this is statistics. After you know, I went to school for this. Only ten percent of people go into their marriages as virgins, and I'm being honest. They've sure. had some type of sexual experience. So, Absolutely. So you're thinking, as a man, I'm just asking, as a man, you know, we went into our marriages not virgins i mean not and i'm not going to say sure. this is a rule for everybody i'm just saying statistics says right mm -hmm. that so what is the difference now that you're married i i, I what i'm saying is i would no, what, 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 having you, you that mean, mindset if we I, if i went into my marriage as a virgin right and and you know I, he was my first experience and and i could see that but when it when i didn't come that way why is it why is it such a Hard yeah. thing for you to get over. I always it's, say this. I always say this about us as men. We're 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 not we're not um we're not deep, but we are a little complicated, right? Mm -hmm. So you would think that's logical, right? If you don't want nobody in here but you, why would you marry me when you know somebody else been in here? Like Correct. you ain't the first person been in my living room. Like this, you know, I had babies. I came to the marriage. I had kids. But this yeah. is my second. Round. What it is is proximity and timing. Okay. So, so if I if I married you, and we dated for six months, eighteen months, two years, a year, then I know that I'm the only person you've been with, and we're four years into the marriage. Like that's us. That's us. But now, I just found out that you did this. Now, it is. It is. It is the. It's the proximity and the timing and. You know what you did when you had three kids, but I get to look at him and say, "Oh man, he all right, he all right. It's not the same, mm -hmm. unless y'all still on the phone talking, right? Then that triggers it again. It only gets triggered when somebody's a threat. So let's say somebody from your past is your baby's daddy, 
Mm-hmm. And every time you gotta talk to him, you gotta step out the room. And you okay. like this, you like this, y'all talking about. <laughs> but everything is risk, risk, like, and then you he can hear him getting all animated. You be like, calm down, okay, I'll bring it, I'll bring it, I'll bring it over. I'll bring, and you that that that's that insecurity coming out. Insecurity. So so there's been a breach in our mind that makes it more difficult in that situation. It's not impossible, but I can't, any man that says it's deeper than that is probably, he's probably lying. Mm. But that's at the end of the day. And men, we don't even talk about, we, okay, we don't even talk about this, to be honest with you. But we like, oh, that's it, man, that's it. We want to kill somebody. Mm. Man, we, triple Oh, no, I, I, every couple that I have coached through infidelity, literally, the guy, even if it's him, he wants the woman to get over it quickly, right? And we are more accepting. And 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 I, I don't know why we are more accepting. We're more like, okay, even though it hurt us, we start internalizing, am I not pretty enough? Am I not good enough? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, am I not having sex with him enough? Uh, uh, but statistics say that you guys don't cheat because we're not sleeping with you. Y'all m- mainly cheat because it's visual, it's available, and you want to fulfill a need, right? With yeah. us, it's emotional, it's feeling lonely, it's feeling not not uh, adequate enough. If we feel like we're not good, it, it's a lot of things. And literally, from the time a man cheats, it's more like two to three weeks from the time a woman cheats, and I'm just giving you statistics, uh, it's, it's more like um, six to eight months that we mm-hmm. really take that time because we're we're just not hopping in a bed. And I'm not saying that's for everybody. Oh, you. you know, people have one night stands, but you guys have one night stands more quickly than we do. So, so yeah, I agree with that. I think, but I also think that men do get involved in extramarital relationships for emotional reasons too. I think it's mm-hmm. not just sexual, but mm-hmm. to your point, when when Bill Clinton um, was asked about this once, years later, somebody asked him, why did you do what you did with Monica Lewinsky? And, and, and you know, you just gotta love him. He was just straight up, you know what he said? It's because I could. Exactly. It's because I could. So one of the things we don't talk about is the availability of side yep. chicks and yep. the availability of infidelity. It's everywhere. And when you have prominence and success and you have resources, like like when you when we were broke, couldn't go nowhere, couldn't get anything, couldn't travel, couldn't do anything. None of the, you know, our options were minimal. But once you start getting successful, you start being more attractive to a larger group of people. Once your platform expands. And he says, I did it because I could. Some, some, sometimes we as men, we have sex. We have sex outside of marriage because we're greedy. Yeah. Greedy. You you can have sex with your side chick. You can have multiple side chicks. Have sex with both of them and your wife the same day. Just greedy. Just mm-hmm. like 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 just just that. You can you can feed your sex drive that much where it's almost impossible to be satisfied. So a side chick is not really a relationship. It's seconds. It's like for the man. Who, it's like it's like being at Golden Corral. Or well, one of them all you can eat places like, man, all oh, this in here, you think I'm just going to eat salad? Like I'm about to get the steak and the chicken and the fish and the barbecue and all that. And it's just, it's just, but we don't think about the consequences of what happens when this is exposed. What happens when um, um, I lose everything I've built for sex? And that lasts all of five minutes if you're real good at it. Because most of the time it's about three. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Well, I mean, it 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 depends, but I think I think that's another to me that's another that's another problem. I think I think as men we've been trained to go in for the kill to get yours. Just kind of they call it smashing, hitting that. Mm-hmm. So everything that a man calls it is kind of physical and almost hostile. I'm gonna mm-hmm. smash that. I'm gonna hit that. I crush that like, like it's a it's an object to be conquered, 
-hmm. But really the way God created us is there's supposed to be this, this knitting together, this bonding that maybe crescendos into an orgasm, but the real power of real connected lovemaking is the time you spend together kissing each other and foreplay and holding each other and exploring things and conversing. And like, like when sex is real good, you really don't want it to end. Like, but when we're exactly, so but it starts outside the bedroom and, 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 and I have a program called intimacy, love and sex. And I tell women that you have to cultivate intimacy outside mm -hmm. of the bedroom because that's really what sustains the marriage because mm -hmm. they will sometimes becomes a time where you you've seen couples that you know or a person has is missing a limb or you know they've been burned or something like that but when you see them they so connected and they have that love it's because yeah. they cultivated intimacy outside of the bedroom so that's sex good. is not even important because they have such a, a love and a connection that it goes beyond intercourse right and i always tell people if you cultivate intimacy that love that touch that hug that that uh you know all of those accolades all the stuff that you need mm -hmm. once you get inside the bedroom it becomes a lot easier it, yeah. it doesn't become that wham bam thank you ma'am moment because you have mm -hmm. cultivated something that's everlasting right because if you're, you, it's the, like the intimacy we have with God, right? We have such mm -hmm. an intimacy with God that you can literally feel his presence, right? It, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's something that's tangible. If you can create that in your marriage, you can withstand and with, with, get past anything. And that's the reason why I always try to tell women, cultivate intimacy. The sex part will come. But if you really learn to, to intertwine and allow that person to see into you so deeply, you can look at, you know, you can look at your spouse. I can now look at my spouse and tell what type of day he had just from the look on his face. Mm. I hadn't always been able to do that because I was so busy. Right. Yeah. But, but when you learn that you that that uh, transcend you opening a door for the side chick. Right. Um, yeah. So. I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. The other question is, is what can we do as wives? Like name the top two things that we can do as wives. And I, and I know this is a blanket question. What name top two things we can do as wives to start the path of making our marriages more infidelity proof? Top two things you can do to make your marriage infidelity proof. Well, mm -hmm. before I answer that, I want to go back to what you said about, I want to just really just echo and agree with what you said about how important what happens outside of the, the bedroom is to the bed. Because a lot of people don't understand that all the problems in the bed can't be fixed in the bed. Like, like it's not, it's not that you eliminate the bed. There's some things you can work on in the bed, but they, but they don't necessarily, they think if we, we not have enough sex, let's get in the bed and try to do sex, but yeah, yeah. So, so one of the things, so, so if I want to make my marriage infidelity proof, mm -hmm. then I want to do one, of, if I only, if I only give you two things, I would give you these two things. One mm -hmm. is try to make your marriage fun, mm -hmm. not just an assignment. Like, especially church people, man, I just feel like church, like church has done something to us. that made us just boring. Like, it's just like what I'm telling you, just because you went to Bible study together, that's not a date. It's not. <laughs> that don't count, man. We went to revival. That don't count. We went to prayer meeting. I'm not even, I'm a pastor. And I'm saying, I'd rather y'all not come to that stuff if you if your marriage is bad. Like, <laughs> make your marriage fun. Okay, so let's say this. I'll say it. Most people won't say it. I believe you will say it too, Gail. Mm -hmm. The reason why we are hiding extramarital relationships is because they're fun. Fun. Yes. They fun are fun. fun. They, they create like anticipation. you like, oh my God, I can't wait. It's true. It is really true. It I'm, is so true. Well, it like, is so true. That's why that's I tell like you. I was like going to the amusement park every day with this person. like, And everything yep. over here is so even if it's spiritual, it's just, man, just introduce fun. That's how they got married. That's how you got married. Y'all was having fun. He's having so much fun. We said, we should spend the rest of our life together. 
Yep. That's how we got married, and right? You gotta do it. And I tell my women, you have to date your husband and don't just go with him looking like you rolled out of bed. Like on Fridays, it's on. Like I, mm. I do it up. The same mm. thing you did to get him is the same thing you got to do 10 times more to keep him because we get complacent, right? And, yeah. and that is the reason why I created bringing sexy back to the marriage because we get so complacent, but mm -hmm. we and we take you guys for granted. Not mm -hmm. saying that that you know you should go commit adultery or whatever, but it is the anticipation of, of going on a date and and him you know holding my hand, doing all the things that he did. I look forward to that, right? And, and we yeah. have to go back to that and make it fun. Do stuff that you like. You said do stuff that you did when you was dating him. And I always tell women if you went to watch him play ball just because he married to you now don't stop going to see him play ball like yeah. go and be cute on the sideline right yeah. like why you have to make him say you can't go play ball with your boys no more no because that's going to create a void because that's what he was doing when you met him it was good enough when you met him why not go participate with it now yeah yeah so so I, 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 I so the first one is fun right so mm -hmm. little little plug so you know i wrote the book side psychology why men and women cheat right so one of the things that I say that's important is, is framing. It's a, it's a concept that I call framing, right? And I'm going to mm -hmm. be going over this, if you don't mind me making this enough, on July 13th. I don't mind it up. On July 13th, I'm going to do a, uh, a two-hour workshop on this, helping people, just couples. You've got to be married. July 13th, it's going to be here in Maryland. And if you go to my website, it's sagacitycompany.com, S-A-G-A City company.com. You can register. It's just $60 a couple. And I'm going to spend two hours helping couples, what I call framing. So, so I'm going to use two, two F words. So gas company.com is where you go to register for that. But uh, fun, somebody put that in the chat for him, please. Yes. S A G A city, sagacity city, sagacity company.com. You go to that website and you can register for that workshop and, and you can do it online too. You don't have to be in Maryland to go. So, Framing is this, Gail. So we know we got to have fun, right? Go have fun. Mm -hmm. What I do with a framing is you ask each other, this is how we infidelity prove our marriage. Five questions. What do you want to see us do every day? You ask this of your spouse and you both write down, what do I want to see us do every day? What do I want to see us do once a week? What do I want us to do once a month? What do I want us, want us to do once a quarter? And what do I want us to do once a year? Right. That's the frame. It's five things daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. And, and, I, and what you say is and, and whether we've done, whether we whether we do it now or not, whether I've already told you I want to do this and we never did it, whether we used to do it and we stopped doing it. Here's what I want to see us do every day. And it's amazing. The ideas that come up like I like for us to do this once a week. Or I love for us to go here once a month. I love for us to do that quarterly. I love for us to do this annually. And this is the deal, right? You write it down. So you may have 10 things because you may have different things. Then you might say, we both want to do this every day. Well, let's do this every day. Or we both would like to do this weekly. Or you want to do this monthly. I want to do that weekly. Well, let's come. Let's do this twice a month. What starts happening is now we start putting things into our, into our schedule, into our system. We start framing it into the marriage things that we both enjoy. And now I know every year we're going to do this because we agreed we're going to make this happen. I did this with my wife. I said, what do you want to see us do this? Everything she asked for, I started doing. Like stuff I didn't even know that this would be something you would want to do. Like I ain't got my stuff. She didn't ask me what I wanted. But anyway, it don't matter. Like, <laughs> like so I'm so excited because I know this is going to strengthen our marriage because these are things she wants to do. I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna make it happen, right? That's so. So when you're working like that on your marriage, the last thing on your mind is a, is a side chick. Like you, exactly. so, you, you. So I'm telling you, the person who's cheating on their wife, if they really, if they're human, if they're normal. The wife is who they really dig. It just got bad. It just went south. They just stopped talking. They just started fighting. They just went there several ways. They just they just don't know how to bridge the ch chasm between each other. But if they ever start focusing and locking back in on each other, that was that's who they fell in love with. 
unless there was some circumstance around the marriage, because people usually make excuses to say, you know, I wasn't listening to God when I married this person. When it gets bad, they always didn't hear from God. They, bl they, they blame God for. And, and you know what? I, I always tell people in, in the 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 weekly thing you know mm -hmm. gil and i have our daily our weekly thing because you know my thing was uh i like affirmations i like physical mm -hmm. touch right i I, mm -hmm. I like that so you know I, i'm like every day when you come come you know come through the door if i'm on the phone i'm gonna get off the phone right mm -hmm. we're gonna have dinner together i want mm -hmm. you to hug me and kiss me right and so we did That's that good. right we mm -hmm. we, we we do that every single day. And then Good. also I tell people we're busy. We put hair appointments. We put nail appointments. We put all kinds of appointments. You got to schedule sex if you are not naturally doing it. Yes. You got to be scheduled. Put it in the system. Amen. Put it in the system. Because if not. Waiting on, waiting on spontaneity. That's not, that's not happening. And nope. meanwhile, if you keep missing each other, it's. The longer you wait, the harder it is to reconnect. Now it starts becoming more and more obstacles. Now we're yep. not comfortable. Now there's premature ejaculation. Now yep. there's no stamina in a man because a man can't have stamina if he's not active. Like yep. then we get mad. Then he loses his confidence because he's not performing well and all. I mean, get regular. Get regular, even if it's just get regular with that. That's why I said at That's least right. schedule it. It's schedule it. Put it on the schedule. You don't miss those other appointments. Don't miss that. Yeah. Don't miss that. And show up with the right attitude. <laughs> somebody asked, is my book available in the current format? We're not. Oh, somebody responded for me. I love to hear you. I was just looking at some of your comments, but. Thanks. Yeah, Somebody's you can. You uh, you know, I have to go back after white chat, and we will. I will go back on, and you're welcome to go back on my page and answer. And any of the ones that I can't answer, I'll I'll just shoot them over to you because there's a. I'm looking in the back end of a uh, uh, B live. There's 108 comments, mm -hmm. 57 reaction is 124 people on here watching us live. So this mm -hmm. is this has uh, been something that is so needed. Um, mm -hmm. I too, um, like I said. Uh, like I said, I just, I'm releasing a program on May 6th called Life After Infidelity. It covers all of this stuff. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for writing this book. Thank you so much for spending some time with my women here, because this is such a, a, a topic that is destroying families. And you said something in your book that I want to repeat. Uh, da, 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 da. And God gives us so many examples of a, a of a side chick, but mm -hmm. what did you you said something about? Uh, where is my thing? Resisting temptation is is to value of what temptation is going to cost you. Yeah, yeah, what it puts at risk. What what to put at risk? I, yeah, when you, value when you, value was at risk. Yes, and when when you commit adultery, what are you putting at risk? That was a powerful, powerful statement because mm -hmm. you're thinking for right now, you're thinking for that moment, but you're not. You're negating the the future, and I know for a fact that infidelity does not does not affect your spouse. It affects mm -hmm. the children. It affects pe family and community. It affects mm -hmm. so many different people. So it, and it literally, it's like when you do it, it's like, was it worth all of this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And for 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 that person that you really don't want, you know, most of the time they're not going to leave their 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 wives for the, for the side chick. They're mm -hmm. not going to, uh, you know, uh, there is some instance that it happens, but the statistics say it's very, very little. I think it's 4% that mm -hmm. a man will actually leave his wife to go with the side chick, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And and, 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 it, and it's very, very hard to come back and really make it like it was. But again, when you have God in the center of your marriage, he can make everything new, fresh, and and I just want to leave the women with um, something that is positive. And if you are facing infidelity, if you have faced infidelity, you can truly 
allow God to put a period behind that, not a comma, and you can move forward. But it's a lesson to be learned in every single thing that that happens during the infidelity. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. There's a lot we put at risk. Yeah. Recall, uh, I think it was Robbie Zacharias who says, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes when, when the opportunity or the offer to cheat is a book in front of us, you know, we just got to say, I think I put in one of my affirmations, you know, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not interested in infidelity that, that that's not in my budget. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm not, I just, the cost is just too high. And, yeah. and what you're trying to build, you know, think about when it, when it destroys a family and how the grandparents can't even get to see their grandkids anymore. Cause people split up and move to different parts of the country. And it's just, it's so messy going to different houses on Christmas. I mean, what it does to the family construct is very, very tough. And it's not the, so, so I want to offer a word of compassion for somebody who may be tuned in who's feeling like, well, I am the side chick, you know, mm -hmm. I am that person. I'm, I'm a side chick right now. I'm pondering, I'm been in something. I know it's not right. It may be flirtatious stage right now, but I really like this man and I know I'm wrong or, or maybe you're in a relationship and you're married and, and you, you were a side chick and maybe you, you're feeling regret because you see, you know, I broke up a family and I, I or whatever, like, I, I want you to know that even though we're speaking because we're, we're, we're champions for marriage, we're, we're not speaking to, to put down people and to condemn people and make people feel bad about their mistakes. And, what I would say to anybody who's crossed the line, because I have, and you have, like, God, God still sees you as his daughter. You know, when Hagar, when Hagar, I'm sorry if I'm taking too long. But when Hagar, oh, no, we're good. So when, 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 when Abraham and Sarah, at the time, Abram and Sarai couldn't have children. Sarai said to Abram, I have a handmaid and I want her to be your, I want her to be for you what I can't be. Be. So, so now he got a, he got a he got a wife approved side chick. Yeah. Now he was he ain't even, he ain't say nah, baby. We gonna wait on God. He's like okay, let's go. Hey, praise the Lord. So, but when but and it was working right. Mm -hmm. But when she had when she had his baby, the Bible says she started looking down and despising Sarai. And one of the ways you know that you're in an inappropriate relationship with a man that's married is when you don't respect his wife. Yeah. Anytime you don't respect another man's wife, you need to move away from that space because that means you're feeling sympathy for this man. You don't like the way she's treating him. Well, that ain't none of your business, right? If you don't respect a man's wife, you should, unless it's your son, right? And you mad at his wife because she beat him up or something. But you got to be careful with that. Long story short, Hagar gets put out the house because you know the side chick usually loses, right? Loses, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gets put out the house. He sent her out with some bread and some water. Terrible. As rich as Abraham was, he sent his family out with nothing. And the Bible says she's crying and thinks she's going to die. And the Bible says God met her at a well. Open her eyes, and it says, and and the, and the way God defined Himself in that place, He says He told her, "This is my name. I am the Lord who sees you." And and I just feel compelled to talk to somebody, and I don't even know who that, that is. Some somebody may be watching this later, or somebody may be watching it now, and you feel a, a heavy level of shame on your life. I just want you to know that he's the God that sees you, and and not with love, with eyes of judgment, but eyes of love. He loves you, and he doesn't call you what he, you did. You're still his daughter. But what he wants you to do is is to know that he loves you so much. He wants you to have a whole man. It's better to be without a man than to share a man with somebody else. And you did it because you were empty and you were hurting and you were trying to fill a need and you're a rescuer and you're a comforter and you're a nurturer. But if you would wait on God, he'll give you somebody for yourself and you don't have to, you know, and, 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 don't, and, and, I'm, and, I, and I just wanted to say that to somebody for, for whatever reason, I believe somebody needed to hear that too. Because 
we 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 don't want our passion. I don't I know for me. I don't want my passion for marriage to make anybody feel like they're unloved. Oh, I, I don't want that. I don't I don't want that either. But I also want the you know, God is love and He loves everybody, mm -hmm. even when we make mistakes, right? And right. so for me, I, I I wanted and I'm I'm blessed to have you to give us a male's perspective perspective side of this because there are so many wives that are hurting and they feel as if they're inadequate. They feel that they're not good enough. But I believe that we're walking away with nuggets to to really understand. And I knew what drove my husband away was my mouth, right? And so we have to be able to communicate and be bold enough to ask the question, what am I doing, right? What am I saying? What, what, it, what, it, what would I do to push you away to someone else? And I wasn't bold enough to ask that question because I was doing too much talking and not enough listening, not enough observing, right? And so what if you're a wife on here again, he gave he he gave hope to the, the woman, but I want to give you hope that you can recover. You mm -hmm. can be the wife that God has called you to be, but you just got to ask the hard questions. You got to show up and you got to do the work. You know what I like about what you said, Gail, to the wife, you because you you openly say, you know, my mouth, I put my mouth, my mouth killed my marriage or whatever, my mouth was pushing my husband away. And there's a, and you gave the solution. The solution to a big mouth is their ears and our eyes. So you said I was talking too much, but wasn't seeing enough and hearing enough. Mm -hmm. So if I pay attention and listen and 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 learn and observe, but that's what side chicks are doing. Yeah. Remember, they're collecting mm -hmm. data. They're always mm -hmm. collecting data. Like, what's going on, honey? Because it's a safe place to vent. But if I vent to my wife and she just just, oh, that's stupid. That's because yep. your mother raised a little boy. Your mother made you. Like, like everything gets gets shot down, right? So but that means he shuts down. If I get shot down, I'm gonna shut down. But mm -hmm. like your your response to that is just powerful. Like, and some women are talkers, they're they're bold, they're powerful, they're confident, and God uses them that way. But but when you but when you're married to somebody and they're talking. Like they're talking, they can work in the boardroom and they can get you deals and can make you successful. Um, but when you're married to somebody who feels shut down by it, um, how do you turn that switch off? And and I would say instead of turning turning the mouth off, turn the ears on and the eyes on, right? And so it doesn't seem like I'm I'm losing something or I'm I'm giving up something. No, I'm actually utilizing another skill that is that would be more beneficial so that I can speak with speak life into my name as a wife. Mm -hmm. So we have to get off of here down because uh, that I, I usually don't hold wife chat longer than that. So do me a favor. There's a couple of things we're going to, I'm going to go back on here uh, on, on the timeline and answer any questions that you want. If you have questions for, uh, for pastor battle, I will definitely send them to him or he can go on the timeline because there's a lot of them and we, we didn't get a chance to, you know, dive into those. He has his thing that's happening in July. So repeat that again, pastor battle. Um, so the, m m these women oh. can register for your online or even in, in person. And I would so, love to, to be a part of that or come to that or however that works. Oh yeah. That's great. Where are you located? I, I'm here in Maryland. Okay, so 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 I think my daughter's running my um is on here chatting. Okay. Um, as my as me. Okay. <laughs> so well, that's me. good. So hopefully she's on here. And you know, uh, po posting stuff. I have somebody posting. No, as well. And so um yeah. also I want you guys to know that uh, I will be releasing May the sixth. Say May the sixth. My new program, um, Life After Infidelity, is an online self-paced program. So you guys, please go to my website. The link should be in there. Somebody should be posting that for me um, in there. And, and, and again, it yeah, has yeah. been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you pleasure so much. You. And I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to come to you. I'm the first man in the, I'm the first man in the white chat. You're the first man in the white chat. Like, yay. Thank you. got to so 
you guys go get his book. I I, I have post, I have sent out emails. And so if you on my email list, y'all know where to go get his book. If not, go to Amazon, just type it in, keep battle. It comes up and it, it comes on Kindle. He has a hard cover and a soft cover. You guys, please support this because the, it is a wealth of knowledge in this book. Literally, I, I learned some things and I've been doing this for 12 years, but I learned some things and I thank you for being transparent. I thank you so much for, for writing the book. I, I send nothing but blessings to you that you're going to go number one, right? A number one bestseller, right? Because again, us people of God have to support our own, right? Yeah. And, and you you took a, 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 you went out on a limb because most most pastors are not going to go out on a limb and say that I you know cheated on, on, on the first lady right. uh, of Zion. Yeah. Then they're just not going to do that. So I appreciate yeah. Being transparent and the work that I do, I, I try to be as transparent as possible too because you change lives from your story, right? You yeah. truly do. So, again, I love you guys to pieces. I will see you on Thursday in Wife Masterclass. I'm going to have the amazing Sonya J. Wells, and she's going to be talking about the spiritual grounded wife. And, and I'm going to tell you, she's going to go in. And so I love you guys to pieces. Have an amazing Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us here on Wife Chat. See you later.